John Medina is one of my favorite people on planet. I, I don't know any other way to describe it other than that because it's true. He is the author of Brain Rules, which is a must-read book. It is currently the number 15 bestseller on the New York Times self-help paperback list. And uh, God, he consults the military, he consults Hollywood, he teaches at SPU, Seattle Pacific University, and the University of Washington. He's a molecular biologist, and I am honored to have you in my life. John Medina, Professor John Medina, welcome. There you go. My goodness. Now, that's the thing I could chew on all day. Thank you very much. But the one thing I wanted to focus on today is the younger generation, the millennial kids, people who are now entering the workforce, those who were taught, supposedly, that they could do anything they possibly want to do, sure. and now seem to be consumed by Facebook, Twitter, texting. How do we deal with these people? And I know that's a very general question to get us real. Well, I, I think it's very important for audiences to understand that there's a lot of what I like to call uh, 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 brain astrology that's out there, particularly regarding this issue. Astrology has as its native premise that if you are born on a certain date, that means you have a certain set of personality characteristics. Whoops! Does that sound familiar? Have you heard of baby boomers and now they have a particular set of personality characteristics? Generation X? Generation Y? Millennials? You can take your pick. It's the exact same foundation. If you are born on a certain date, you therefore have a certain set of behaviors. Well, I consider that astrology and it has all the intellectual uh, integrity of the psychic hotline, if you if you couch it as data. Excellent. I have seen, and I'm talking with uh, Boeing and other companies about this, seven different behaviors that are changing. Seven, or actually a total of nine. Seven of which are indictments, and two of which make me, if we do this correctly, make me more excited about the generation coming into this workforce than any I have seen in a long, long time. So I have reasons both to be thoroughly depressed, let's kick our guns and shoot ourselves, because we're all going to hell, uh -huh. and two reasons why that that's a really stupid attitude. So, shall we go through them? Let's do that. The number The number one observation that I have seen so far is that the student's database appears to be getting poorer. Okay, I think that, in fact, I write down here, expert notion is shifting from knowing the knowledge outright to simply being reassured that it could be gotten from somewhere. The kids seem to know where to get it, but the information resident in their heads? Well, I'm not so sure. That can suck when it comes to critical thinking or even answering a simple question if you ask this generation to leave their laptops in their backpacks. The brain in the zero-sum game of information transfer is lazy. And if it thinks it can get information in one particular place, it won't keep it resident within the head. It'll just remember where it's supposed to go. So instead of seeing something that where you take something into what we call working memory and then dealing with it, the first response to many of these students is, oh, let's go find it out. Now here's, I don't necessarily think that's wrong. But what is a problem is that when they go to the vast resources of the internet, there's a lot out there so much out there that they are just as likely to enter into wrong information as they are into correct. Curiosity, Eric, means more to me than just about anything. And when you can anesthetize curiosity simply by going to sources with, whom, with which you agree, then all of a sudden you're not doing any exercises in the mental gym. You're allowing actually somebody else to do those exercises for you. Well, that's a pretty powerful in indictment. What's, <laughs> what's number two? Let's go to number two. Let's now. go to number two. Okay, here I go. This is it, number two. <laughs> it gets worse, would be the way to say this. Uh, the student's notion of intellectual toughness is shifting. I've also noticed that. The amount of material they think is hard is growing, and I sense that they don't like it. The threshold seems to be changing from my perspective. Things that I remember being easy to do seem to be a little more difficult for them to do. And so what my sense is is that their, their ability to think critically about certain things, because the database has gotten poorer, uh, has produced in them, well, if I all of a sudden know this piece of knowledge, well, it's a little tougher. I have to work for it a little more. And you know, I don't want to work for it. What does it say on the laptop? And then pretty soon you watch this default uh, beginning to occur. So the idea of intellectual toughness, in my view, is beginning to change. There's a uh, um, big thing to say, and I totally get that. Yeah. And I, I'm not backing away from it for a minute either. <laughs> 
most of human learning can be divided, really, it's real simple, regardless, from the cognitive neuroscience perspective, human learning is all about establishing a rigorous, hierarchically structured database, and then improvising off of that database as soon as you possibly can. My favorite metaphor, as I know you and I have talked many times, uh, I think of human learning the same way I think of jazz musicians. Mm -hmm. Charlie Parker is my favorite, or Miles Davis, you could argue. Uh, there, these musicians would sometimes say, I know my theory really well. In fact, Charlie Parker once said that I have the circle of fifths rolling around my head all the time. He has his theory down cold. Why? Because he wants to stay with that theory? No, because he wants to improvise off of it. He wants to think critically about it. He wants to be tough. He wants to make it go somewhere, make it move. So you have this database. He needs his theory. And then as soon as possible, he needs to improvise off of his theory to create these unbelievable jazz atmospheres that Charlie and others of his caliber were so capable. Art Tatum, I feel, has the same, has a similar feel to me, Oscar Peterson. Okay. Uh, amazing musicians. Why? Because they had a database and they had an improvisation. Mm -hmm. If you have a group of people that don't have a really strong database, the instant they think they are going further than where they were comfortable going, and that's getting weaker, their notion of what's tougher is going to change. They're going to say, oh, I think this is great. If you're not used to doing push-ups, then you might think that going up and down like this, you should be congratulated for because it's going to be tough. It's that idea. Well, and then